A little over 300 years ago, in the heart of what is now central New Jersey, John Harrison, an agent of King James III of England, bought over 3,000 acres from Noenowick, a Lenape Indian chief, for 50 British pounds. The original land, then known as Harrison's Neck, included a 300-acre parcel in what is now the southeast corner of Bernard's Township. While several families owned the property, one thing stayed the same. The land was farmed for more than 250 years. The rich land, with the Passaic River running through it, was a perfect place for apple orchards, farming wheat and corn, and for horses, sheep, and dairy cows. What remains today of open fields, riverside meadow, hedgerows, and the farmhouse barns and other buildings gives visitors a glimpse into what a colonial farm was like. Why the name Kennedy Martin Stell Farmstead? Who are these people? They are three of the farmstead's most famous owners, and each made a difference in local, state, and American history. The Reverend Dr. Samuel Kennedy, he established the area's first classical school designed to prepare young men for college. Many of his pupils attended the College of New Jersey, which became Princeton University. Kennedy's school was later moved to the Brick Academy in Basking Ridge. He was also a medical doctor and the fourth minister of the Basking Ridge Presbyterian Church. Colonel Ephraim Martin was a Revolutionary War hero. In a letter about the Battle of Long Island, it is believed that Colonel Martin would die from a musket ball wound. There has been a little skirmishing and irregular firing kept up between their and our advanced guards in which Colonel Martin of the Jersey Levies has received a wound in his breast which it is apprehended will prove mortal. Miraculously, he did not die. He was wounded again in the Battle of Brandywine while leading the 4th New Jersey Battalion in Maxwell's Brigade under Lord Sterling. He went on to serve with George Washington at Valley Forge in the winter of 1778. He was later a state legislator and played a major role in making New Jersey the first state to sign the Bill of Rights. Five generations of the Stell family owned the farmstead for more than 150 years. They were farmers and state and local legislators. They gave some land in 1851 to help found the Millington Baptist Society Meeting House, which later became the Millington Baptist Church. Other farmstead owners included a Bell Labs scientist and a businessman who grew Christmas trees on the land. How did the Kennedy Martin Stell Farmstead become the home of Farmstead Arts Center? In 1999, the Geyer family sold the entire 45-acre property to a development group. Nine acres of the property became home to Sunrise Senior Living of Basking Ridge. To save the rest of the property from being developed, Bernard's Township used funds from the municipal open space tax to acquire the remaining 36 acres of the Geyer farm. A decision then had to be made. Should the buildings be torn down and the property turned into a park? Could the historic buildings be preserved? If so, what could they be used for? A house museum, a private home, or something else for the community to use and enjoy? A group of history-loving citizens stepped forward and petitioned the town to save the farmstead. A task force was formed and sent out a community survey to find out what the people wanted. The residents voted, and Burnage Township supported the community's decision to use the farmstead for an arts center. Listed on both the national and state registers of historic places, the farmstead you see today is one of a few surviving collections of colonial farm buildings in America, with a rare example of an English barn. The township leased the farmstead buildings to an all-volunteer group of local stewards who started the Friends of the Kennedy Martin Stell Farmstead, a nonprofit organization. Together with the support of the town and community, the Friends began the step-by-step -step task of restoring the buildings with the goal of opening an art center. Farmstead Art Center is now a community resource where people of all ages come to enjoy theater, music, art, and history programs.
the result of the work of the Friends is an excellent example of how buildings from colonial times can be saved, keep their historic features, and become home to a vibrant art center. The English barn, which was built by hand, was used to store grain and to keep livestock. The construction was simple, but very strong and durable. The original support and roof beams, called wind braces that you see today, held up the barn and the roof for more than 200 years. The drop stalls are typical of English barns. The barn has been carefully restored and is now used for theater, barn dances, concerts, comedy shows, and other events. When the sliding door was opened, look out over the meadow and imagine what the farm was like so many years ago. When you peek into the cow barn, notice how wooden pegs and slots called mortise and tenons were used to construct the walls. It is a good example of a small building used by farmers for cows, bulls, or storage. Work continues in the cow barn to turn it into a welcoming history center for the farmstead. The farmhouse was a home for over 250 years. When you step into the house to visit, see an art show, take a class, listen to a history lecture or hear music, look closely. You are surrounded by history. In the timbers across the ceiling that were cut from trees in the 1700s, the fireplaces that warmed the house and where meals were prepared, a brick oven in a wall where bread was baked, the Dutch door with a separate top and bottom half to let the cool air in and keep animals out. And the walls filled with mud noggin which kept wind from blowing through the walls in the winter. All things you would find in a house built in the 1700s and 1800s. The house is also full of secrets. In the kitchen, a hidden staircase was found by volunteers when the house was being restored and repairs were being made. Have you ever thought about how people lived without electricity, heat, or running water 300 years ago? In the 1700s and 1800s, people living at the farmstead took baths in the Passaic River. Water, drawn from the river or a well, was heated over the fireplace for bathing and washing clothes. We can only imagine what it must have been like. The fields were plowed by hand, and the children, when they weren't working in the fields or at school, played with corn cobs to make dolls and learned to curtsy and bow, playing the game of graces with hoops and sticks. The transformation from an old farm property to a center for fine performing and practical arts was realized when Farmstead Arts officially opened in 2010 during Somerset County's weekend journey through the past. The opening celebrated 11 years of renovation efforts which were made possible through grant funding and through hundreds of citizen volunteers support from local, county, and state government, and guidance from some of New Jersey's top preservation professionals and the Friends of the Farmstead Board of Trustees. Somerset County, through their Historic Preservation Grant Program and the New Jersey Historic Trust, have provided encouragement and generous funding for the Farmstead since the beginning of restoration. The Friends of the Kennedy Martin Stell Farmstead have received many honors and awards, including New Jersey's highest honor for creative use of an historic site. This award recognized the teamwork between the friends, civic leaders, and restoration professionals. Look at what has been accomplished. See a labor of love which preserves our colonial past so it can be enjoyed by generations to come. With continued help from residents, volunteers, local businesses, the township, county, and New Jersey's preservation professionals Grassroots efforts have spanned nearly two decades and show no signs of stopping. Today, the farmstead is a destination for professional and amateur artists who showcase their talents for audiences from local and surrounding communities. People of all ages, from all over New Jersey and beyond, enjoy a variety of programs including art exhibits, concerts, historical lectures, community theater and events, workshops and art classes and more. The farmstead has come a long way since opening in 2010, but there is much more to come. Restoration and preservation work will continue. The Dairy Barn Foundation will become a terrace for outdoor events. A welcome center is planned for the cow barn. With the goal of linking the past to today, 
The Friends had the vision, pending approval by the State Historic Preservation Office, of preserving the foundation and historic elements of the Wagon House and using the space for a solar energy exhibit as a tribute to farmstead owner and solar energy pioneer, Dr. Gerald Pearson. Quality, accessible arts programming will also continue and be expanded to reach new audiences so they too can take a glimpse into the past and share in the joy of fine and performing arts. The friends welcome everyone to enjoy and be a part of the Farmstead Arts Center. Take a step into the past. Look for unique features in the buildings. Stroll the grounds. Marvel how much our world has developed from the 1700s and 1800s. Enjoy the art gallery. Attend a concert. Listen to a lecture. Watch a theater performance. Try an art class. Volunteer. Become a member. Help us preserve our past and shape the future of the farmstead.